Hi everybody, today I'm making one of my favourite soaps, rose geranium with pink and white clays and I thought I'd attempt a diagonal pour technique which I've never done before. I think it turned out pretty good. To make this soap I worked out how much soap I would need in total for my mould then I divided the calculation in two, effectively making two batches of soap for each colour. All the recipe details are in the video description box below the video. And if you've never made soap before, please watch my soap making safety essentials video. I'll also place a link to that below. These are the oils I used for this soap. I actually made this batch for my friend Alison and she likes this style of olive oil based soap, but you could use another recipe if you want to and apply the same technique. For this soap, I used a combination of extra virgin and refined olive oils, virgin coconut oil, castor oil and raw cocoa butter. Making this soap is all about the preparation. So to start with, I prepare my oils, my lye solutions, my essential oils and the pink and white clays. I add my cocoa butter to my liquid oils in each jug and then I warm them up in the microwave for about 40 seconds to melt the cocoa butter into the other oils. These are my two lye solutions. I used half ice and half cold water when I made these to keep the lye fumes down. Here are my two batches of essential oils. I used rose geranium and rosewood. Then I get my clays ready. I used about one teaspoon of white kaolin clay and half a teaspoon of pink clay to make this soap. My final step is to test my mold setup. So you need to work out some way to securely keep your mold at a 45 degree angle. Sitting it on something that won't slide out from underneath it is really important. Now that all the prep is done, it is time to make the soap. So I just did take a temperature reading of my oils. You can see it's 41 Celsius or 106 Fahrenheit. That's a really good temperature. You just want it around about body temperature, a little bit higher is fine. Next, I add my clay into my oils. I'm doing the red half first or the pink half and I add that clay into my oils because it really does need to be blended through the clays can go clumpy otherwise and I like to do that before I do anything else generally it's easy because I know how much I need so I just mix that in first and that way I know I'm not going to have any lumps then I add my lye solution in that goes it's around about the same temperature just about body temperature about around about 35 degrees celsius it was and I start to blend that through. Now because I'm doing this technique and I've never done it before, I'm quite cautious with this. I don't want to over blend it, I just want a light trace just after emulsion and then I'm going to set it aside, get my mold set up and then pour the soap. So I really don't want this to get too thick. Uh, rose geranium essential oil accelerates trace too so, and you're going to see that happen so we're not going to add that in until right before pouring so I'm getting my silicon molds they're going to be my base and I did use a spirit level just to kind of play around with the angles on this but honestly you don't need to just eyeball it because you do have to adjust it as you pour anyway now that I'm ready to pour I give my soap batter one last little mix and then I very quickly just whisk in the essential oils. With this essential oil blend, you do not want to stick blend this soap any further. It will accelerate the trace and thicken this soap really fast. So once, it's, once the essential oils are mixed in, just pour it into the mold. I'm aiming to pour this about half way through, so this is half the amount of batter for this whole mold and you can see I'm just kind of adjusting it as I pour to make sure that it kind of goes to that bottom corner on the other side it's a little bit hard to describe verbally but you're going to see what I mean and see how that soap batter is thickened up already that's how quick it thickens with rose geranium and rosewood essential oil so I'm just kind of gently kind of shaking the mold to tease a bit of soap into those bottom corners and I get my chopstick out as well and actually push some of the soap right up into those corners give it a bit of a tap on the bench if that helps you really just want to get it as 
neatly spread out across that diagonal half as you can. Now because this wasn't smooth, I decided to deliberately uh, texture the surface of this half. Um, I did go a bit crazy with my chopstick, <laughs> but I think the effect, the general effect turned out pretty good. If you had a different essential oil blend or a different fragrance oil or you, you left this batter unscented, you would be able to pour that perfectly smoothly and get a nice straight line. But there's no way you can do that with roast geranium essential oil. It sets up so fast. So I decided to intentionally texture the top of this just to see how it would work. Bit of a close up there. Little bits of kind of pulling the surface up with the chopstick. And then there are a few little tiny little touches of pink soap on that other side. So I just got my little spatula and cleaned them off because I want that other half of the soap to be a different color and not have any spots of the pink on it. So there it is. You can see it's kind of set up already, um, but I leave this for about 10 minutes or so just to make sure that it's nice and firm before I do the second half. So just leave that for a little bit. Here it is after 10 or 15 minutes. You can see that is quite solid. There is no way that soap is going to fall out or do anything dramatic. It's pretty well set. So next I make the second half and this is the white or the creamy colored half. I'm using white kale and clay added into my oils. It doesn't make the whitest soap, but that's perfectly fine. I was kind of going for that creamy look anyway. Um, once the clay is mixed through, I pour in my lye solution, just exactly the same as the other side, as the pink portion. Just pour that in. Make sure you're really careful with your equipment and you know what you're doing before you make soap for the first time. And start blending that together. You can see the colour changes really quickly and it emulsifies. Just like the other batch, I'm wanting just to bring this to a light trace and then I put the stick blender away. So minimal stick blending with the soap because again, this rose geranium and rosewood combination they accelerate the trace of this soap really quite a lot you're going to see just like the other one this one firms up pretty quickly so whisk that essential oil through and don't delay in getting this into the mold if you're using these essential oils that is you can use other essential oils that behave a little bit better <laughs> if you want to i'm just making this because this is the combination that my friend really likes so I pour this over the back of my silicon spatula just to make sure I get a nice smooth pour and just gently kind of spread that out over the top. I wanted the top of this to be as smooth as possible so once it started thickening I didn't pour any more and you can see I'm just tapping, tapping, tapping it to fill the creamy part up all the way over to the side to make sure that it's level at the top. And I've just had a little spare mold that I threw the excess soap into. You can get another bar out of it if you have spare. And then, now that the soap is poured, I'm just going to wrap it up so that it's got a little bit of insulation. And this soap will gel. I want it to go through a full gel phase. So I'm gonna leave this wrapped up and I do put it in my cooler box so it's insulated for 12 to 24 hours it was probably around about 18 hours here is the soap the next morning it's very solid um, if you wanted to cut this kind of soap with a wire cutter you may want to do that sooner than I have but because I just cut my soap with a knife it's fine to leave it till it's quite hard because my knife goes through hard soap quite easily and there it is it's just beautiful. It smells amazing, as you would imagine. Um, but it's a really lovely soap. I'm super happy with it. The diagonals pouring turned out quite neat, which is cool. Oh, I love watching that. I just get my little cheese slicer and slice off those little edgy bits. Just makes it 
nice and neat and you don't have to trim them later then. There it is, ready to cut. Isn't that the most satisfying thing to watch? <laughs> I could watch people cutting soap all day. Something about that. There you go. So the bumpiness in the diagonal line in this turned out a bit smoother than I thought it would have, which is actually good. It, it's nice. It's not too ridgy. I thought it might be a little bit more pointy, but the lines are, are fairly smooth. And um, I sent a photo of this to my friend Ali and she really loves it, so that's good. <laughs> but there it is. I'm really, really happy with how this turned out and I think I'll probably try some more diagonal pours in future videos. This is literally the first time I've ever done this. So... It was fun to make. I hope it encourages some of you to give it a try. It is a little bit of a pain making two batches. Um, it's a bit of an extra effort, but it's worth it if you want a really nice result. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Thanks also for your support through my Buy Me A Coffee page. It is very much appreciated. Take care of yourselves. And let me know what you think in the comments section and I'll see you for the next video. I'm going to be doing some more techie ones soon, so I hope you look forward to those. See ya!